In this video, I'm going to talk about factors influencing loss and grief, particularly things which hold us back, things which stop us moving forwards in our grief, things which keep us locked in our grief. That's what we're going to focus on in this video. Before I go into the main content, please remember to subscribe to this channel. There should be a button below me. Then click the little bell icon and you will be reminded when these videos go live. And finally, if you really like the video, then please feel free to click on the thanks button, which should be below me. And you can give a small amount of money, which goes towards helping the uh, hosting of the website or you could even join as a channel member and I'll do members only videos as well. Again, that's a mon monthly subscription. Um, and then again, you're supporting the channel to help these videos going. So factors, think, factors for influencing grief and loss, particularly things which hold us back. And as ever with these videos, uh, they are often stimulated by conversations that I've had with people. And I has, was having a conversation yesterday about these two sort of almost dichotomies. One is that um, we are held in the past when our, and by the past, I mean the point at which our partner died and we're held in that pain and it's incredibly painful. And at the same time, we're living today, which is obviously in the future from that point, um, and thinking about our life moving forwards. Now, most people want to have a life moving forwards that is joyous and wonderful and happy. And most people at the same time, when we think back to when their partner died, is a very painful experience. And I think what happens is that sometimes we get locked into the past. We get locked into the pain because we kind of say, well, if I move to the future and I move uh, this way and I move to where things are lovely and good. It means I've forgotten about my partner. It means I've forgotten about them. I've moved on. I can no longer see them. I've moved on because now life is very good. But actually, I don't think it means that at all. I don't think it's two ends of a spectrum. I think we can sit firmly in the middle, holding both of them at the same time, able to think about the past and engage with the past and the time that our partner died and that be incredibly painful. And we may decide and choose to move through that, but that pain can be there. And when I think about the loss of Claire, that pain is still there. I still miss her desperately. And life now for me is really good. And I really enjoy my life and I'm really loving life. And the pain is still there. So I would just what, what, seek to ask you to question yourself. Are you holding yourself back from having a, a, a nice life, from ha being happy because you feel that you need to experience this pain? And if you don't experience the pain, then it means you've moved away. And I just wonder if you can question and begin to think, can I actually have both? Can I have the pain and a joyous life? And if I have a joyous life, it doesn't mean I moved away from the pain. And can I begin to accept that, yes, I could have a life that I actually enjoy at the same time as holding the pain? They don't have to be mutually exclusive. I would love to know what you think.